Mini charts are a great alternative to spark lines. They're just regular charts made really, really small. You might consider using them instead of spark lines when you want something other than column, line or win-loss charts. For example, maybe you want to see two series in your mini chart, like this actual and budget data. Let's take a look at how to create a mini chart. Here's my data. Now I want to insert an area chart that's going to show the trend of these values over time. So all I need to do is select the actual values. I'm not going to display the axis labels or a legend, so I don't need to worry about the labels for the columns and the rows. Then insert and we want the area chart 2D. So next I need to strip the chart down so that it just shows the area. I don't need the axes, the chart title or the grid lines. The next thing I want to do is get rid of the border on the chart. If I click off you can see there's a faint border. So let's go up and format it and we'll set the shape outline to no outline. Next I'm going to resize the plot area so that it fills the entire chart area because we need these charts to be as big as possible when they're in the cell. So I've created my chart, now all I need to do is position it. So with the outside of the chart selector I'm going to hold down the Alt key and that will just snap it to the grid. So I'm going to place it in column O and then still holding down Alt I'm just going to resize it to fill the cell. So now that I've created one, all I need to do is rinse and repeat. So let's Control D to duplicate the chart. And we need seven of them, so I'll do it six more times. Let's just position them. I'm going to grab this one and position it down in the bottom cell. And then I'm going to select each of the other charts. I'm holding down Shift while I select them. And let's just format them so that they're all aligned to the left. And then we're going to distribute them vertically. So now we have our charts, one in each cell, but at the moment they're all picking up this line of data. So let's just adjust them. I'm just left clicking and dragging to move the series cells down to the relevant row. Okay, so now we have a mini chart in each cell. And because they're aligned to the cell size, if I increase the width of the column, you can see that the chart resizes in line with the column width and likewise I can change the row height and the chart will resize as well. Let's just undo that. Now one thing to be aware of is that each mini chart has its own vertical axis scale based on the values in the series. So if we look at row 7 you can see that all the values are less than 20 but most of the values in row 8 are closer to 200. However this isn't obvious from the mini charts. Now having the vertical axis on different scales makes it difficult to compare the charts to one another. So if this is something that you want to do, you're best to use a ghost series to force the vertical axis scale to be uniform across all of the charts. Now the ghost series contains a single value. That's the maximum value in your data set. So if we look at our data set, you can see that the maximum value is 200, which is there. So your ghost series value will be 200. And this is going to force all of the charts to have the same vertical axis scale. You then set the color for the ghost series to no fill so it's not visible in the chart. Now there's a link in the video description to a post on how to insert ghost series if you're interested in that. So that's an area chart with a single value. It's similar to sparklines except sparkline don't have an area option. But let's look at another option where we have two series. So here I have some actual data and budget data and I want to show the actuals as an area chart and the budget as a line chart. So I'm just going to start by inserting an area chart for my actuals. And then I want to add a series for the budget. So I'm going to copy this data and then on the home tab we're going to paste special and I want a new series, the values are in the row and we'll click OK. So now we have our two series. This is my budget and this is my actual. So what I want to do is change the chart type for the budget. So I'm going to right click, change series chart type. And then here I want this to be a line chart. And I'll click OK. Now we can go about formatting this as we want. So let's get rid of the chart title and the grid lines and the axes. 
The next thing I want to do is apply the formatting. Now it's easier to do the formatting while the chart is big. So control one to open the format pane. So let's set this to a gray color and we'll make it much thinner because when we make the chart smaller, it's going to look much thicker. And let's change the color. We'll make it a paler shade of green. Okay, now that our chart's looking how we want, let's make the plot area the same size as the chart area. And now all I need to do is select the chart using Alt, move it into place. Oh, I've just noticed it still has the border, so let's remove the border. So we're going to go shape outline, no outline. Okay, and I'm going to close this pane so I can reach my pull handles, holding down Alt and resizing it. So there's our mini chart that contains our budget and actual. Now I'm just going to duplicate it seven times. So control D. Let's move this one down, holding down Alt and then shift while I select the other charts. Now I could use control A to select all objects, but I have other charts on this sheet, so I don't want to do that. So we're just going to use shift. We're going to line them left and then distribute vertically. Now all we need to do is select the series. So I need to move this one down and likewise. So while I do this, I'm just going to fast forward so that you don't have to watch me rinse and repeat. So now each chart is picking up the correct data, but you'll notice the formatting's all messed up. So when I chose the new series range, it reverted to the default formatting. So what I want to do is copy the formatting from this chart and paste it onto the others. So with the chart selected, control C, and then I'm going to select the next chart. And then on the home tab, I'm going to go paste special. And down here in the dialog box, I'm choosing formats. So I'll click OK and like magic it updates. Now a quicker way to do that is just to select the next chart and press F4. Once we've done the paste special once, we can just rinse and repeat with the F4 key. And there we have our Excel mini charts plotting actual and budget data. And again, the vertical axis on each of these is specific to the data set. So if you want all of the vertical axes to be the same, you'll need to use another ghost series. And lastly, I want to show you how to plot a bar chart for this data here. So I want to plot the variance data. So I'm just going to select it. This is the variance. So I'm going to insert a bar chart. Now I need to format the vertical axis. So with it selected control one to open the format pane. And here I first of all need to set categories in reverse order. And if I add the data labels, you'll see why, what I mean. You can see here the first value is 18, which is the last. And here the last value is 22, which is the first. So we need to set the categories in reverse order so that our chart bars are in the correct order. Now I want to hide the vertical axis, but I don't want to delete it. I just want to hide the tick marks. So let's go down and they're set to none already. That's fine. Let's turn the labels to none. And I want to format the vertical line so that it's a slightly darker gray and a bit thicker. And you'll see why when I make the chart smaller. So now that we've hidden that, let's turn off the horizontal axis. We'll get rid of the chart title and the grid lines. Let's format this negative series in a different color. So with it selected, I can invert if negative. So we're going to go green for the positive and red for negative. Now with the chart selected, let's hide the outline. So I'm just going to click this again because it's already set to no fill or no outline. And let's resize the plot area to fill the chart space. And before I make the chart smaller, I'm just going to set the gap width to 30 because this will make the bars a bit bigger, which will be helpful when I make the chart really small. So with the outer edge of the chart selected, I'm holding down Alt to snap it to the grid and holding down Alt while I resize it. So now that I have my variance chart, I don't necessarily need this column because I've got the values here. So I'm just going to make this column really narrow. If I hide it, then I have to change the settings on the chart to display hidden columns. So I'm just going to make it much smaller and that'll just save me a few steps. 
So there you have mini Excel charts. They enable us to do a bit more than we can with the sparkline options of line, column and win loss. So I hope you find them useful. Take a moment to download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here or in the video description. I hope you can make use of this technique. If you liked it, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.